what's going on everyone you're welcome once again to david data channel if this is your first time i'm really excited to have you here and if you're a returning viewer thanks so much for coming in i'd like to please hit the like button and the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you can notify once a new video drops in all right so have you found yourself using the same um logic in your sql code in different places in your dbt project over and over again well fear not because in today's video we're going to be talking about dbt macros All right, so DBT macros are a really fundamental or interesting part of DBT projects that allows you to um, reuse your code or reuse your SQL code in different places of your DBT project, right? So, so that you don't have to repeat yourself on different places. So typically, if you have a transformation logic that you get to apply on different models, why do you have to write the models over and over again? You could just simply um, create a macro of that logic using Jinja and then you call that um, macro in your several models that you would have that um, macro being used. So typically, think of functions in your programming languages, that's macros, right? That's the way thing. All right, so macros are stored in a dedicated folder in DBT, referred to as macros. All right, so let's jump into our screen and then we can have one example of macros and then you can explore that on your own in documentation on DBT website. Okay. Okay. So let's first of all look at the DBT documentation on macros. Yeah, you can read up on Jinja. We'll talk about Jinja as well. But then macro first. Macro and Jinja are pieces of code, like I said, that can be reused multiple times. So um, your macros. And let's go to our developer um, location. Your macros are defined in SQL files, just like your models, and they're typically saved in your macros directory. Yeah, they are saved in your macros directory, right? I have a few macros here and we use this one for our custom um for our custom schema name and we use this one in one of our models right so you create your macros in this folder so i'm going to try to create a very simple macro i'm just going to copy this as and use this um we're not going to use that for our macro um so i'm going to call this macro um get date range so i'll call it get date range so let's say I want to do select that from customer models. All right, so let's run um, everything from our customer stable. All right, so imagine I want to have a filter in everything. Let's say um, let's let's just say we want to create a macro that acts like a filter within date ranges, right? Within a certain date range, and I would apply this filter to several of my models. I could just create a macro for that. So how do we do that? I'm coming to this macro. I created this file called date range. I'm going to paste this in here. I'm going to take off um, this. I'll take off what this guy, and then I'll take off this guy as well. So to create your macro, you put your double parenthesis and your percentage sign because it uses ginger. Okay, and so we'll call our macro get date range. Okay, and then next thing we want to do is to put our parameter. So let's say. We have one parameter called start date. We have another parameter called end date. So our macro or our function takes into parameters start date and end date. So what is the function that happens within this date parameter? So basically, we're saying um, where date column. So um, our, in our customer model, our date column. So let's use first order, right? Where first order? Where first order? Um, between. So basically, we're writing SQL, but then with Ginger. Mm, between start dates and do this as well just the same we saw yeah so for your um when referring to a column or referring to any other thing you have to put it within a double parenthesis here okay between start dates and end date all right and then you end your macro with the percentage sign and end your macro so this to create your macro this is the logic within your macro and then you end your macro so let's save this and see it runs without any error all right so saved so i come instead of doing um adding my where clause and all that i can just call this macro called get the range how do you tell us you can call a macro you can simply um use this double para, para, para parenthesis within that to call our macros so i'm going to say i'm going to do this um 
get this range get the range then I'm going to put the parameter start date so let me see my start date is 201801 and my end date is um let me do 2018 one twenty six. So let's run this and see. Oh, awesome. So we see it returns for me. Only values where the order date is between this and this. So typically within your models, you can call your macros like this, and then you can define your macros in here, right? Because you're using them in multiple places. So basically, that's really how macros work. And then we can um, so if we compile our macro for example and uh, we didn't we didn't do that so if we compile this now yeah rather so let's compile here yeah, yeah you see that it now tells us that you just add this way close where first order between um 2018 and 2018 all right so this is basically your macro and um yeah you can explore for that and see how you can use macros for more complex logic use or multiple areas of dpt project to improve your workflow and allow you to practice the right principle of do not repeating yourself. All right, thanks so much, guys, for watching. I hope you got something also out of this video. Please don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, and the notification bell as well. And um, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section as well. Thanks so much. We'll be taking the next video. Bye for now.